In this video, we're going to learn the basics of working with curves in plasticity. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about the basics of working with curves in plasticity. If you don't know what plasticity is, I suggest you check out my first video where we talk about what it is and how to get access to it. So this is a beta program. It's currently in, in testing right now. So there might be some bugs and I'm on an unstable release. But with that said, I haven't really found any major problems. So I think I wanna talk about how to work with curves and plasticity. There are a handful of things that we need to know that will just make the workflow a bit easier. So the first thing I wanna suggest is that you get comfortable working normal to a specific plane or face. Now, there is a cube in the upper right-hand corner where we can click on X, Y, and Z to align our views. You can also use keys on the keyboard one, three, and seven. So keep in mind that the key binding here is based on Blender for a lot of the different tools inside of Plasticity. So if we hit five, for example, we're going between perspective and orthographic view. But making sure that you're sticking to one of these views, one, three, or five, or normal to the XY plane, the YZ plane, or the XZ plane, then it's gonna make it easier when you get into more complex curves, things like splines. When you're working with lines, circles, any of the polygons or rectangles and so on, they snap to the specific orientations pretty well, but the curves are really tricky in 3D. We're not gonna really go into that in this video. It's a little bit more advanced, but I do wanna talk about some of the basics. So to get started, it's important that we get comfortable with obviously moving around. So the center mouse wheel, pressing it down will allow you to rotate. The right mouse button will allow you to pan. There are a handful of shortcuts. I'm gonna focus on where the tools are, but we will talk about the shortcuts as well. Anytime you hover over a tool, you can see that there are shortcuts. Shift A for line, Shift S for spline, Shift W for circle, and so on. But to get started, let's just look at a line. So when I click on the line and I select any of the different orientations, you can see that it is snapping a few places. If you don't want it to snap, there are snaps that you can turn off but holding down the control or the command key will temporarily override those. So if you're just trying to snap to an, uh, an axis or not the origin, then it is important that you do keep in mind that control will override all of that. You won't be able to snap to a point, a line, an origin, an axis, or anything. So I'm gonna start by going to the origin. I'm gonna drag out, snap to Y. I'm gonna go perpendicular to that, parallel to X. I'm gonna find the intersection back to X and come back to the center. Once we sketch a complete closed profile, we're then presented with a handful of widgets on the screen. So we've got these dots in the corners that will allow us to create fillets and the arrows. The arrows allow us to move the different ends of the, in this case, a rectangle or a square that we created and just sort of move them out normal or perpendicular to their current orientation. The dots will allow us to add fillets to the corners, and you can see that there's a tool tip down here, D. If we hit that, it'll fillet everything at the same time. So that can be extremely helpful, especially when we start using things like polygons and we have a lot of different edges. But what if we wanted to change the orientation of these lines? The way in which we do that is we expose the control point selection. As soon as we use just control points and we don't have all the options, you can see the little pink dots are displayed. If we look at this from the orientation in which it was created, if we select one of these dots, we can pull it out, but notice that it's messing with the tangency with these arcs. Now, when we add these fillets, it's going to be based on the current orientation of the lines. It's not going to maintain tangency. So if you need tangency, then I suggest that you get the shape down first and then add the fillets after the fact. So if we run into this problem, there are a few ways that we can solve it. First, I'm gonna use the trim tool to get rid of the arcs. Now, the first thing you'll note is that the curves are now separate. When the curves are separate, it becomes a little bit trickier for us to do a few things because now they're not connected anymore. The way in which we can work with this first, we need to make sure that we have our edge selection. So I'm just gonna hit tab to bring all those back. I'm gonna select the edge, select the end point, hit G on the keyboard. Now G on the keyboard is the shortcut for move. You can also find it down here. 
and we're going to use the freestyle option, which is F on the keyboard. So F, then we need to select the point that we're going from or the starting point and where we want to go to. Once these two curves are touching, I'm going to right click. I'm going to select both of them inside of the curves menu, and we're going to join them together. So again, you can find the tool down here, J on the keyboard to join them. And once they're touching, we're able to join them back into a single curve. We can then select this endpoint, again, G on the keyboard to move, F for freestyle, pick the point where we want to start and the end point, and now we've connected them back together. Right click to accept. Now we can move this around freely and not worry about the tangency, and then we can fill it after the fact. So again, just keep in mind that the curves are really easy to work with, but thinking ahead to the shape that you want before you add things like fillets can be really helpful. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to go back, potentially delete it, or just have some compromises in your geometry. So the line is the basic tool. This is probably the first thing that you're gonna to use to start creating a shape. I'm gonna hide this and I'm gonna move on to another tool. So in the curves menu, we have four different options. Hermite, Bezier, NURBS, and Cubic Spline. Now these four will produce four different results. We're gonna take a look at each of them. First, I'm gonna hit number one for Hermite and I'm gonna start sketching. So when I do this, when I right click, you'll notice that the points disappear. And we have this arrow here that doesn't really seem to do anything right now. Well, when the points disappear, when we use the control point selection option, you can see they come back. I found that with the Hermite, it's a little bit tricky for us to change the curve after the fact. So if you don't know exactly what you want your curve to look like, this one's a little bit trickier to use. Let's select the curve tool again, and this time we're gonna create a Bezier curve using two on the keyboard. With the Bezier curve, you'll instantly note that we have additional control points. These control points are actually looking at the tangency the, or the influence from each end point. As soon as we create another point, you'll notice those tangency points are changing. And if we bring the end point down here, right click to accept. Again, just toggle on the control point selection. What we have is the points that are directly on the spline, and then the points that are controlling the tangency direction and influence. And what I mean by influence is how far these are away is going to control how much influence it has on the curve. You'll notice that this is not that hard for us to change. We can move things around, but it does get a little tricky. So again, if you don't know exactly what curve you want, this is one that I would also just suggest that you avoid. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use the NURBS type. So I'm gonna hit three on the keyboard. And I found that the NURBS type is a little bit easier for us to edit. Sometimes, and it may be this beta version that I'm using, sometimes you'll notice that it doesn't display on the screen. And once we have a curve, I'm gonna right click to accept it. Again, the control points. This one has any points that we created on the spline. And you'll notice that the Bezier handles are not directly on the spline. And what, essentially what we're doing is this is kind of equivalent to a box control spline. So if you think about drawing an invisible line between this point and this point, and then one between these two points and between these points, what we're essentially doing is we're controlling a box display. So if you equate this to something in Blender, this would be the, the sort of box version before you apply a smoothing or a subdivision surface. So when we have a box display, we're essentially creating the box version of this and the curve inside that Bezier curve is what's getting created. The last curve that we have is a cubic spline, and this is probably the easiest one to sort of get a handle on. What I would do here is I'm gonna to start to draw it the other direction. You'll notice that all the points are directly on the spline, and that makes it a little bit easier for us to move around visually because we can see exactly where the points are, where they're moving to. Since we have the curves active, I do wanna focus on another tool in here called Bridge to Curves. This is extremely helpful because it allows us to select the start point and end point between two curves, and we can either create a spline or a bridge. Now, a bridge, you'll notice, is reversing the direction here. The spline is gonna maintain tangency. There are a couple of options here that you can use to increase the tension or um, increase the influence. I'm gonna leave all those at zero, and I'm gonna focus just on this mating option between tangent G2 and G3. 
Now, if you're not coming from either a math background or a CAD background where you have maybe class A surfacing, then you might not know what these do. Well, tangent is just looking at the direction of curvature. So this point right here is going to be tangent. If we drew a straight line tangent to this first curve, it would extend to that point. The second option, G2, is looking at not only the tangency direction, but also the radius of curvature. So if we were to continue this curve on, the radius of curvature would be the same, and essentially we would get a circle. The last option, G3, is also looking at the acceleration or the rate of change. So what that means is it's not only looking at the tangency direction and also the radius of curvature, but it's also looking at how rapidly it's changing. So these are some great options that allow you to create some really unique shapes. And since we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I'm gonna turn this into just a grumpy little face because why not, we're already here. So that's the basics of working with curves. And again, those last two options when we're talking about curves, the NURBS option number three and the cubic spline number four are generally the easier ones for us to manipulate after the fact. Then I would put the Bezier curve as third and the Hermite is one that I generally would not try to update after the fact. I would use it only if I knew exactly what the curve was supposed to be. So pick and choose which curves you want and decide how you want to create your models. But that's a basic overview of using those curves. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these. And we're going to talk about some other options in here. Again, I'm not going to focus on the basics like circles or rectangles, but I do want to talk about center ellipse. There are two options here. There's a three-point ellipse or a center. The center ellipse is relatively straightforward. Notice that we can snap it to X, Y, or Z. I'm just going to sketch it here but it gives you an ellipse. Now, this is a really handy way to make a nice smooth shape. I'm gonna hit X to delete it because I don't need it. And then I wanna talk about the spiral. There is a second option under the spiral called custom function. This can be extremely handy if you know exactly what curve you need. Generally less handy for concept work or creating these sort of rapid concept art, but it is there. The default in here will create a sine curve Go ahead and play around with that if you want. I haven't really found a good use for it yet, but spiral is extremely handy. Oh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my view a little bit. I'm gonna start at the origin. I'm gonna drag this up along the Z and then begin to drag it out. One of the extremely handy things about spiral is after we draw it, we can still manipulate it until this dialogue goes away. So the dialogue and the on-screen manipulators allow us to change the height, to change the diameter, and then if we grab this white circle here, we can actually change the taper. This is extremely helpful because what we can do, I'm gonna hit tab to select all of these again. What we can do is we can actually use this to very quickly and easily create a solid body using pipe. It could be a path for a sweep, but we could create a coil or a spring. We can also use this small box to create a, a hollow pipe. So very quick, very easy for us to create something like this. In a traditional CAD software, that oftentimes can be an extremely difficult task. It is really quick here in plasticity, so that's great, especially if you're doing concept work. You could use this to your advantage, and again, you know, we could, um, we could snap to an axis, we could extrude this up, we could move things around, and we can create some really unique looking parts. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue on with some of the basics that is the majority of working with curves, but there are just a handful of other tips that I wanna give you. So the next tip is what happens when you want tangency with something. So I'm gonna create a center diameter circle here, and then with the line tool, snap where you want your line, and as you drag out, you can find a position where we snap to tangency. So this can be extremely helpful. Again, it's important that we maintain our view, and this can be extremely helpful because it allows you to find those positions where you have tangency and then create those closed profiles. The second tip that I wanna give you is that when you have multiple curves active like this, when you select them, it's gonna automatically grab the entire profile. One thing that you wanna think about is what you actually want to extrude. So in this case, if I only want the circle, what I would do is I would hide the other curve. I can extrude this out, right click, and then if I show all of it, I can bring this part out, 
using the select target bodies, we can join them together using the union or queue on the keyboard. And that was very quick and easy for us to create that solid body. Again, something else that would sometimes be tricky in CAD, but is really quick here in plasticity. So that was a, a basic overview of curves. Now there are obviously a handful of other curve options in here, but the basics will stay the same. So what I would suggest is first get comfortable with orienting yourself to specific planes. That's gonna make the curves much easier for you. Then from there, I would say, make sure that you're comfortable with using the control point select and moving things around with move or G on the keyboard, understanding that the freestyle option will allow you to snap those endpoints together. And sort of a last takeaway tip, if you want to get your sketch to be normal to a specific face that is planar, so this face here, for example, once we select that, we can hit space bar and that'll take us normal to that. So if we begin sketching, and let's say that I wanted to create a small cutout directly on this face, what I could do is just sketch that, and you can see that it's actually on that face. So now I can use it to create a small bump out, or I can pull it in, use the select target bodies to remove it, and then now we were able to just draw something directly on that face. There are other tools that we can use that we will talk about in future videos, but once again, that is a basic overview of the process. If you have any questions, please let me know. I plan to do more videos talking about individual features, but curves is one of the most basic things to get started with modeling. So make sure that you do spend some time and understand some of the nuances of the way in which it works in plasticity. So again, if you have any questions, leave a comment below or send me an email, support at caducator.com. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.